All right, y'all. Hello. So one of our favorite songs is by Lil Duval and Uncle Snoop. Uh, called Living My Best Life. Y'all probably remember, Living My Best Life. I ain't going back and forth. I can't really sing the rest of it, but you know what I mean. Even though us living our best life and you living your best life may look like two different things. Shout out to T.I. Um, it's something we all strive for, okay? But it can be difficult because we live in a world where, you know, they want you to want all the external things. They want you to do all the things that they want you to do, okay, all the time, bombarding with all these external influences and things of that nature. And so um, it can be really difficult for you to get off track, for you to lose sight of who you are and what you want, what you value. And um, when that happens, that can stunt your personal growth, um, limit you and where you want to go and lead you down a path to a very unfulfilling life. And you know we're not about that here. So we want to be living. We're trying to live our best life. Okay. Some days, <laughs> some days wanting life but be life. Man. Anyway, uh, if you lose sight mm -mm. of that, you don't have any idea what to, what you need, what you need to build your values on your goals, your core relationships, all of those things. So if you're in a place or space, you or someone, you know, as we say, um, we're doing you doesn't even sound like a concept that you're familiar with because you're so busy minding, tending, and care about other people, other things, or whatever the case may be. You just stick around because the episode is for you. Hi, I'm Pam Williams, a mother. And I'm Jessica E. Williams, a daughter. And this is A Mother and a Daughter Truthful Chat, where we discuss our 35-year multi-layered relationship. We've been through so many ups and downs. Not only are we family, but we're business partners in the high-stress world of event planning and production for short films. We've also shared the same therapist for over 10 years. What some people call codependence, we call collaboration. So join us as we share stories from our lives, have candid conversations with other mother daughter duos, and shed light on the roller coaster ride of being a woman while raising a woman. All right, y'all. Cups up. Welcome to Truthful Chats. Okay. I'm Gemini ganging all day, every day, all the time. Inquisitive and restless. So true. I'm women evolving. I would like to be there, but I'm not. Shout out to Sarah and the whole Roman Evolve team. Um, I just put under your comments. Prayer and oil for this entire situation. Now we was looking for that virtual link, but it doesn't seem- 10,000 like people in the stadium, I guess it ain't happening. It's fine. You and Beyonce, okay, queen? <laughs> you, you and Beyonce. Jesus and Beyonce. Oh, and Sarah and Jake oh. Sold out readers. Anyway, welcome to Drupal Chats. If you're just now joining us for the first time ever. Um, these are designed to engage us on the ongoing practice of creating generational wellness. If you have no idea what that term is, or you like, I don't know what that is, well, just look somewhere below where this video is. There's some form of explanation. Uh, here at Create Generational Wellness, we have a theme every single month, and then these truthful chats unpack that theme just a little bit. So it is September. Oh, I was gonna sing a song that's not about September. Anyway, were you gonna sing? Do you remember? No, I was um, gonna sing "I'll Be Gone to November," which is a Wyclef Jean song, no. which is too much. For that. The twenty. I think I've been reading a lot September. of things. I've been reading a lot of things about November today, so that's why my brain is on it. Anyways, um, September's theme is no, and today's episode is know yourself for your best life. Okay, so last week uh, we talked about knowing your worth. If you were not here for that as we say every episode. Go back and listen or watch the other episodes if you can. We build it. We build, we build it. something. We're um, building something. It's a lot of the same information as well, but again, sometimes we sound like a broken record. But the steps is the steps. To you. you. Steps. But I think to other people, maybe not, but... Whatever. We're just happy here. Um, so we talked about that um, and realizing that uh, getting to know you, of course, you can't know yourself or if you don't know yourself. Okay? It's a, they go together like Cousins. peanut butter and jelly. Oh, you told me not to do that. Um, you can do this. I just told you not to do the other thing. Okay. Anyway, that was the last okay. week's situation. <laughs> go back. You're... Anyway, so we talked about uh, external contingencies, which is kind of what we were talking about in the opener. So these are things outside of us. Oh, I got my hair. That uh, we can't really control. Um, that kind of sometimes clouds our judgment and gets in the way of what we actually maybe want to be doing or the kind of money we want to be making or the kind of people we want to be hanging out with because we're so filled caught with up. Usher Raymond. Uh, caught up and filled with all the things from, sorry, from from all the other people's 
uh, expectations and things of that nature. So um, that can throw us off balance, especially if it gets out of control, because when your thoughts don't become your thoughts um, and you're questioning the nature of your reality, shout out to Westworld. Uh, that can get really crazy because you can get into a space where it's negative self-image or devaluing your self-worth. Um, so that's a little recap. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> That lock wanted to be in a shot. Sorry. Uh, that's a little recap of last week. Um, but we're taking the conversation a little deeper because words is important, but how do you get to work if you never kind of knew yourself or you've known yourself in one particular season of your life, right? Or you were really wow. great deep. about this particular thing. But now maybe you're transitioning, okay? Um, because Oof. I'm in my mid-30s, so it's been a lot of transitions. But she's in her 60s, almost 70s, so it's been even more transitions. So we're not, so I think I think I'm saying all that to say is knowing yourself is not a one and done situation. It is an ongoing, ongoing, as we say, evolving situation. Oof. And uh just because you know yourself in one space, you might be starting to know yourself all over again in a different space and time. You're a different person. Yes. Um, I think that will preach, as they say. That was very Girl, good. I don't even be trying. I just be talking. Yeah, but <laughs> it's so true. The transition, who I was at 36 and who I am now at 68. Like at 36, I was a new mom. Um, I cannot imagine. <laughs> what? You can't imagine being a mom? Oh, oh I you can't, can't imagine, imagine being, me being a mom at 36. Yeah. No, I am. I'm barely taking care of myself. If I had a whole human. Shout out to all y'all. My sister got four kids and I, I love her. My homegirl got two. I love her. I'm like, shout out to y'all because I, I... Yeah, 36, you were four. So I had been a mom for Ooh. about Sorry, years. that's not to despair as a parent. It's just, I can't, I can't see it for my life. If I was 36 with a child right now, I'm sure I'll figure it out. But it just, it, it's so incongruent to my lifestyle. I just, anyway, continue. It takes a lot. But I am very different now than I was then. And um, some things were due to external circumstances, but some things are due to just, you know, you change on the inside. Life be life in it. It makes you go to a different place, right? Um, So what is self-knowledge really? All right. So it's defined as the conscious awareness and understanding of your personality, your strengths, your weakness, your values. We do talk about those things because all those things are, they make up who you are. And if you're not dealing with your strengths, your weaknesses, your values, your emotions, your feelings, your beliefs, or whatever, you out here just skating through life and not really getting to the essence of who you really are. And to quote the great Rashad Swan, actually, it wasn't um, Rashad. It was actually Nunu, (laughs) played by Lauren London, for all those who's getting through life. Some of y'all take off is weak, weak. and you're starting to make Rashad look bad. Okay, if you know from ATL, then you know. If you don't, go rent it and or stream it, and you'll know where that line falls. And it makes sense. It was actually uh, something I took for life. It wasn't just a yeah. lot. A lot of y'all you say it take, a lot too. Y'all, for all sorts of things, but mainly you take look, off this week and you week, start to make a shot look bad. And you start to make you look bad. Okay, we trying to help you out. But anyway, I digress. So, yes, but it's a good digression. So listen, it involves introspection. That's just a fancy word for you got to look at yourself. Look inside yourself. Where is that from? I don't know. Probably. You believe. Um, So you have to have the ability to reflect. You need to have the willingness to do it. Because a lot of times people do not want to look at themselves. This is the part where some of us get lost. We get in trouble because we don't want to do that. Michael Jackson told you best. Shout I'm out to starting Michael. with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change your way. So sometimes you got to ask yourself, is what I'm doing making sense or do I need to change my way? Can I just pause right here? This has nothing to do with anything. I was literally listening to the Jackson 5 this week. The fact that Michael could sing like that at such at a seven. young age is really, excuse my voice, it's a phenomenal feat. Like when they was playing the, the tracks and they dropped the track and it's just his vocals, it's crazy. And not all his notes are perfect. He has like scrawny seven-year-old, like scratchy pitch and like whatever. But he he be in the pocket, his melodies. I just I need to shout out uh just him and the Jackson family. And he was, a, he was a he was a prophet. Like, he was. Y'all really be trying to tear down this little image and name. I won't stand for it personally. 
But man in the mirror, they don't really care about us. All of the things he tried to tell us. So back to this part, you got to look at the man in the mirror and you got to see, do I need to change my ways? Uh, Some of my ways, maybe not all of my ways, but do I need to change some of them? them? Because if you're going to do that, if you're going to try to get to a place of wellness and wholeness, where you go through life, living your best life, you gotta creating generational wellness. Yeah, basically. you gotta learn how to how to uh, do that in order to know yourself. So, why do you need to know yourself? Because you need to be authentic. We don't don't nobody want to be hanging around nobody fake all the time. We just I need mean, to. some of y'all do, but prayers for deliverance. Yeah, I think if you hang around, if, if you, you hang- like hanging around mm-hmm. fake people. If you if you hang around fake people, um, maybe you, you might be fake. You enjoy being fake, like yeah. you enjoy. Uh, this is no shade, but small talk and you you enjoy surface level relationships. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at a I cocktail party if, for like an hour, yeah. maybe. But but like if to your base your whole, whole life, life, all your relationships, whatever, on being fake and nobody really knows who you are, and and it's exhausting because you got to be most of the time. Some of y'all if you're kind of that, if you have that tendency as a person, it kind of goes with people pleasing. It kind of goes with wanting to be accepted. So it also kind of goes along with you have to change in every crowd that you're in because chameleon. you have to adapt and chameleon to chameleon. each and every group of people that you're around. And that gets exhausting. And you got to have a good memory because some of the times you'd be forgetting what you said to this person about that person, and then you'd be like, oh, sure, again, caught up. Shout out to Masego uh, with his song, <laughs> Shallow, too. It's a really great song yeah. about a time where he was dating a shallow girl, and he was like, she just incredibly shallow. <laughs> you you, you, you oh. want to be real. You want to be authentic to who you are. And if you, like you said, if you're a square, square, stay yeah, in the square. square so if you're a fake person, good wisdom comes out <clears> if you're a fake person, stay with the fake people, but the authentic people find your tribe. That's mm-hmm. what we're trying to say. Find your tribe where you belong. <clears throat> the authentic people are going to see it. And if you are a person that wants to be authentic and wants to live live a really true, down to earth, complete, full life, authenticity is really important. And not to say shallow people can't live a full life. It just <laughs> it was like she made that sound really dark. Shallow, Y'all can, but you know, you're gonna be in the sha la 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 low. We hated that song, by the way. <laughs> Get into it. All right. Clarity and direction. All right. You want to be able to have clarity and direction. Do you know where you're going to? Shout Do you to like Diana. the things that life are showing you? So come on. Get clarity, get direction in your life. Let that direction. that that help inform your decisions, what you're doing, who you're doing it with, right? Which leads to decision making skills. If you have clarity and direction, hopefully you're making good decisions, not trash decisions. Not and sometimes your or decisions are trash not decisions. trash necessarily. They're just not always in your best interest. They're just not the best thing to move you forward. Um, and to get you to that place of kind of like peace and resolution in your life where you're like, okay, I like where I am. I like me. Um, I love myself. Yeah. Got to. I was watching. I was thinking the other one. I like me. Do you like me? What was that song? That was Kirk and uh, Truth. Yeah. I used to like that. Yeah. That was a good song. Because God likes me. Yep. (laughs) So anyway, decision making. Emotional intelligence. We talk about this. You want to be emotionally intelligent. You want to understand why you do what you do. Why? So that when you're going to get to a place where somebody can trigger you, possibly, you understand why they're triggering you. You understand episodes about that, by the way. why you're getting upset. You understand what you can do to mitigate that so that you just don't pop off and be going crazy all the time. And your blood pressure is up and, you know. I just told myself I wasn't getting my blood pressure up today, literally. In the car. And you had reason. Right back. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to. Yeah, so, yep, that's that was your emotional intelligence kicking in, though. Yeah, because I really... Because you could have let it... But I really don't have... Here's the thing. I think this is also... I say this all the time. It's a quick sidebar. But over the years, I've been known to say... To lean into the idea of an executive decision. 
And I think I've realized that when I don't have real, when I recognize that I don't really have no full executive decision making over how this happens, I can make myself available. I can be like, wow, I would, you know, like to help with this situation or do the thing or whatever. Like I can, I can give that. But if it's something I really don't have no real executive decision making power over, why am I going to get myself upset about it? Like, I'm like, well, for it, that's just wasting my energy, getting me super upset. Um, aside from like, if this is just something emotionally, like I'm discovering and figuring out or whatever, then that might be another thing. But if it really, if I literally can't really do nothing about it, it's really about you. I'm trying to be helpful, but it's really <laughs> about you and your journey and what you got to learn. I'm not going to be mad. Your takeoff is weak and you are starting to make you look bad. I can't help you. Have you not not look bad if you don't? If what you is, don't care. J. Cole said, uh, you know, don't say first you don't want to be saved. If I'm trying to, I'm, I can see. I'm like, let me try to help you. And you refusing to help or you, you know what I mean? I'm like, everybody got to be out here making their own executive decisions with a big boy and big girl draws on. And you had a situation that's today, your decision. <laughs> but that it was, but that's, that, I'm glad that you know that's, yourself. That's this particular situation, yes, but it's, it's something I do you. all the time, yeah. Though, where I just be like, I don't have the emotional energy <clears throat> and bandwidth to, to expend on that. Uh, and this is a particular work situation, so I'm like, <laughs> but I, 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 I think the important part here is that you realized it was an external contingency, it's quote not, unquote. It's, it's not really my, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's like there. At some point, it's out of my hands. It's out of your hands. It's out of your control. You did the best that you can do. And that, again, is emotional intelligence. You're not beating yourself up about it. You're not trying to figure out what did I do? Did I need to do something? And there was a part of me fault? that I was trying to do is that. this, that, like, blah, blah, blah. But if you can separate yourself and go, nope, this is not my burden to bear. I'm going to feel this way about this and I'm going to move on. That's very and maybe intelligent. We, yeah, maybe we need to do like a part and parcel episode or like a part and parcel maybe class or something because that is really literally a skill to learn when things are yours and when things are not yours. Yeah, right? so, that's really, really so, good. Um, my therapist also tells me I'm getting much better at that. Well, we've been at it a while, right? Um, resilience, is that where I'm going next? Yes, resilience is right. So, yeah, when you have that emotional intelligence, then it's easy for you to bounce back. Like, I can remember a time when this going like it went today would have had you really upset about. I would have been like, did I do enough? Did I, I do I enough? Do? Am, am I enough? It's still running in the background. Am I enough? Did I do it? Maybe if somebody else had done it, it would have been better or this, that, and the other. But to be able to separate and go, nope. That's your stuff. That's, that's this. Stuff. This is my stuff. I'm going to own my stuff. I'm going to do what I can do about that stuff, which you have and, done. And not that there's not space and place to improve, right? Like, I just think that you doing a self-assessment in your self-assessing doesn't mean you need to take on other people's stuff, too, if it literally does not belong to belong Really to big skill. Literally, somebody has made their own executive decisions. Now, they might affect you or they might be reflective of you, right? Especially when we've talked about in work scenarios and things like that where you know, things are team projects or team efforts or team sports, but everybody got to show up with their A game. And if they don't, I can't. <laughs> I, I was thinking about me. I can only be responsible for me. I get, but that's what we talk about, self-knowledge. What What are me. you? Shout out to Childish Daniel. What do you know about you that is important and effective for any particular situation you're in? And when you get to the place where you know that, then you can lead a more emotionally stable life. You're not going up and down, up and down with every stable. emotionally stable with every situation and circumstance. You go, you know what? That ain't mine. That's somebody else's. And I'm going to bounce back from this particular set of situation, circumstance thing right here and go on to the next. All right. Um, hopefully that's how you want to live your life. I mean, some people don't. Some people are addicted to chaos. I love that line from that movie, I can't remember the name of it now, but um, Uncle Sam was in, but I can't, it, Addicted to Chaos, where it said, you know, you have the people that, you know, every time you see them, there's something wrong. This didn't work, that didn't work, or something happened, or I got this, or this and that, or oh my God. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Somehow the chaos and the drama of your life feeds your adrenaline, feeds your oxytocin levels, or something like that, and it gets you to a place of a high. 
But if you get to the place where peace is your high, where you're like, you know what? I'm going to try and stay and protect. Protect my energy. energy. Shout out to Janae Eichel. Yeah. You want to stay in that Zen zone place, then this is what we're talking about. If that if, if that's not how you want to live your life, then this is not for you. But if you are trying to get to a place, to get there. if you're trying to get to a place where your life is peaceful and productive, and kind of zen and just kind of fulfill. Really just not taking on extra stuff. Yeah. That's not sure. That's who we talking to. And and I think that um that that's why, like I say, sometimes I'd be like, some of these episodes probably sound like a broken record to you, maybe, unless you're just complete new information. Um but you have it's to daily you thing. have to do the thing to unravel because what I was gonna say for chaos, for some people that feels very normal. Like if you grew up in, we all have some variation of dysfunctional family, right? But if you really grew up in a super chaotic environment or that could be in your home or literally in your neighborhood or your nation. Um, <laughs> some, nation part. Sometimes dysfunction feels very, very normal. And there's, once you start to sort of unravel those things to be like, that's not normal or that's not okay or whatever, right? It's a process to continually unlearn, as they said in higher learning. Um, some of that stuff, and it takes a minute to adjust from being like, chaos is my thing, to peace is my thing, to continually making peace your thing, because it doesn't feel uh, familiar or familiar. Yeah. yeah. And especially mm-hmm. if you're the main one leading the charge. Anyway, there are some steps that you can take on this journey of discovery. Cue the half and half. Mm-hmm. The of discovery. Now streaming on Netflix. I think it's streaming mm-hmm. on Netflix still. Um, anyway, love that show the most. Um, okay, but you have to want to do them. Okay, that's that's always the caveat to everything. Um, and again, we've talked about it. Some people, some of us, I'm gonna say us, not y'all. Some of us are indeed afraid to do that. We're afraid to open Pandora's box. We're afraid to see what's inside. How did it get there? Do I want to keep it? Do I not want to keep it? I'm going. Am I gonna hoard this? Is this a core part of my? Um, does it protect me? Oh, yeah. Really important. Is it, uh, does it protect me? Is the core part of my identity? Like, have I built my life and who I am around this memory or this person? Or this person said something to me and I said, I'm going to um, never let that never happen. let that happen again. Or I'm going to prove them wrong. So, like, some of these things are not just fly-by-night questions, right? We've actually formed identities and lives and walks. Philosophies and, and philosophies values and, and beliefs and tone, all the tones things. of voices and all things around this. looks. Anyway, um, so you get to know yourself by doing several things. Some of this is <laughs> repeatable uh, if you are with us often. Um, hopefully by now you're doing it. Hopefully by now you're doing you it. Okay, the steps is, is the same. The steps is and what you have to do. you've been with us for a while, you know what the first step is? Stop dropping right. Get you a journal, boo. So self-reflection, like we've been talking about, introspection, journaling, meditation, um, which, again, for the saints, we're not talking new agey. It's just an opportunity to quiet and distill your thoughts. Okay? And listen to God. Yes. Your emotions, uh, you know, think through your experiences. So really just putting yourself in positions and postures quiet. of stillness, of quiet, of all of the things. Okay. Um, seek feedback again from people you know, like and trust. People who are hopefully not on a destructive chaotic life pattern. This is one of those things of like we well, gotta change a circle, which I'm sure we have an episode about too. But seeking feedback from people who like actually are trusted friends, family members, want the best for you, things of that nature that can give you different insights, perspectives about yourself. Um, the keywords here are different perspective if they saying the same thing you saying uh that might not necessarily be the thing unless you're trying to you know confirm something right or figure out like am i crazy about this and they be like yeah girl you're right like that doesn't seem like that to me um i guess maybe if they're giving you honest let's just say honest advice that is yeah but some people's honest advice is very very blunt (laughs) and sometimes you need that i guess Sometimes, but, and here's, that's what I was going to say. If somebody's perspective mm-hmm. is causing you to want to harm yourself or others, right, or put you in a particular space emotionally, we're just saying maybe that's not the best person. Um, that doesn't always necessarily mean bloodness, right, person. Because sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that. But I think I think you know, like you said. But I think also you know, like this 
this seems to be a recurring problem for me. I keep bumping into this and bumping into this and bumping into this over and over again. So somewhere deep inside in your little heart and Shondo, no you know that maybe there's something off about this. So what I, what I was thinking about when we were kind of talking about this is you don't want a yes person around you, you never that's just yes going to blow the smoke. <sighs> you know where. Um, but and yes, tell ma'am. you what you want to hear just because of whatever their emotional stuff is or they don't want to hurt your feelings or they need you so they don't want to make you mad. You know, just it could be all kinds of scenarios. But if you've got that person who agrees with everything you say all the time, you might want to check that out a little bit because there could be some different motives. And, and hopefully you have a circle of people that can provide you with different perspectives. And if you're a person who is in that evolution stage, right, where you're moving maybe from a less chaotic or from chaotic environments to less chaotic environments, right, or really making those changes. So I'm not supposed to be telling you that stuff to keep you where you at, right, because they don't want you to leave. And then, like she was saying, they, if you evolve, then where does that leave them? And then yep. are they going to change? Are they ready to change? Are they going to lose you as a friend, person, significant other, whatever? So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, that can get confusing. Um, explore your interests, your personal interests. I'm not talking about what the homies want to do and your sister be dragging you here and your mama wants you to do this and your daddy wants you to do this. And, you know, the pastors that, what do you want to do? Like, what are activities that you personally enjoy? Okay. Um, safe, um, healthy activities. Healthy. <laughs> uh, we're not, you know, advocating for craziness but you know do what you do addictive oh, behavior or anything like that I, that that is so true because i remember when you were about four years old our next parents do this moms do this listen my our, shout out to the stay-at-home dads i don't want to just yeah them out there, yeah but people who spend a lot of time with their kids usually in a home setting whilst they are young end up having their whole life consumed by said child like i remember my next door neighbor who i love so dearly my Uncle Harold said, Shout out to Uncle. he asked me one day, he said, what kind of music do you like? And I realized that for the last three or four years, all I was listening to was Disney, always, Skin of Marinky Dinky Do, Salty, sure. yes. the Praise Song. I mean, all of it was her music. It was music that I had decided was important for her to hear. And, you know, I hadn't played an Earth, Wind & Fire album or anything, any, a, a, a Prince album or anything in a long, long time. And him asking me that made me sit down and go, wait, go back. Remember, what kind of music? Who were you before you had a child? Who were you before you had a 36, child? 36, no pull children. It, pull it back in because that's a part of me that she needed to know, too, not just. Because she wasn't going to be four forever. She was going to wind up being 36. So what does a 36-year-old woman, you know, look like, feel not a like? Not a yeah. So anyway, it's important. I'm saying that to say not to lose yourself. Keep exploring your interests, your... Yeah, things that spark curiosity and joy. And you might have to, like, discover what some of those things are. Like we said, you might have known at 22, the stuff you was into. But now mm-hmm. maybe you're 45 and you are newly married or... Been married for a couple of years, or maybe you have kids, or maybe you, you know, I cannot tell you. I mean, I have like a few friends that were like in the military for a while now, and they had to like sort of reacclimate themselves like to civilian life, right? So like, you know, the military they be taking your whole life. I mean, it's opportunities and things, but like you're used to be living in this very isolated, very regimented mm. space. I hadn't thought about that. That's good. And then you have the whole world at your you have a certain level of discipline the average human is not exposed to so you got to really like learn how to like figure out who you are right so they're just all these kind of things where you know you might be really like for me in production like i had people that i worked with very very closely for like eight nine months right so we had like a whole you know uh, flow and relationship style and all these kind of things are doing and then all of a sudden they'd be gone once the show was over right so i had to like reacclimate come back to being at home more often and figure that out. So there's all kinds of shifts and things in life. Uh, personality assessments and tools, uh, just Google that. There's like a bazillion of those. Um, there's the Myers-Briggs type, um, Enneagrams, which I don't take those, but y'all be real um, obsessed with them. And I don't know nothing about them. 
Um, there's the strength test. Uh, I did the Clifton strength test. I took a whole class about it. I shot it. I should know Tyus before, but I shot her again. It's great. All of the five are escaping me now, but I know the one we have in common is input strength. So those are people who like collect to collect things and not just physical things, um, but we do that too. But also information uh, <laughs> to be able to like, we just have it when we need it. We don't know when we're gonna need it, but we like, this is important for us to have. Like we see value in it, even if it's not something we need immediately at that moment, right then. We just like, this is an important thing. And eventually, most of the time, um, we, wind we up using it. actually end up using it. So maybe we'll come back and do those because they're all kind of escaping my mind now. But we do have that one in common. I do have to go to work. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of things. We have a lot of things, we have a lot of things too, things. but most of the time we need it. Like you can, call me up probably sometimes and say, hey, do you have a, and I'd be like, oh yeah, what? I, I probably do. It's in MacGyver, really. One of the My friend used to call it hoarding, uh, of course, but we're not, we're not that bad. You yeah, can see we, our floors. You can see our floors. Like, we're, we're fine. It's uh, we need, organized. We need, bigger, we need a bigger house. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, of course, mindfulness practices, which we talk about all the time. So that is, um, of course, meditative practices. You could go on meditative walks, right? Just you don't have to be walking fast or power walking. You just walk to clear your mind. Um, yoga. Does Pilates count? I know a lot of people doing Pilates right I now. I love the Pilates, but uh, I don't well, know if no, it's We love reformer Pilates, okay? Y'all be on the floor doing the yeah, most. Reformer. Of it. We like reformer Pilates, okay? So if anyone wants to sponsor performers for us, <laughs> greatly appreciate it. Um, deep breathing, uh, all those things. Anything that helps you be more mindful and present in the moment is something that you should do because it's very easy to look up in all of the moments <laughs> of a day. I'm not even talking about your life, but a day have passed you by. You're like, what did I even do? Today? I, you know, it's very you interesting. In you are really, really good. You are better at this than I am. And I can always tell in the morning, like if you're in the, in our family room and you have done some meditative no i'm saying but when you oh. do i can walk out into the the kitchen and i can feel the energy in this part of the house this is our family room so a lot of times jess will do her meditative exercises and this that and the other here in the middle of the floor here and when i come around into the kitchen first thing in the morning if she's done that the energy is different in the room than when she doesn't do it. So it really I is. I mean, I try to wake up every day in a same place, but sometimes life be life. Um, and people be people. In, but. <laughs> people. <laughs> but if you can get yourself, it, to the I, I do want to say that I feel the difference when you do it, which makes me want to do it. Like when I feel that if there's a calmness and a zen and a, whatever. I'm like, I should do that more, you know? So mine is pretty much, I'll listen. I really have a thing for listening to hymns, classical old school hymns played on the piano. So I have a Pandora station that that's all it plays is old school hymns like that I grew up with. And it's very, you know, bringing me back into a place. It's church nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It is church nostalgia. Well, sure. Maybe church nostalgia she is grew my up mindfulness. Church. She yes. is a PK. She went to church every single Sunday, multiple times a week. It was a whole part of her core upbringing. And most of those songs are from Vacation Bible School, though. When I hear those songs, they make me think about church Vacation Bible School. Nostalgia <laughs> to my point. Whatever. All right. Um, to my point. Let's go back and talk about this personality assessment thing a little bit. So. Um, there's a lot of studies that kind of say, um, I've done a lot of them, uh, by the way, but it, it, it's a combination of nature and nurture. And what I mean by that is some of it is hereditary, maybe 60% people are thinking. So like we both had input for our show. Yeah. So that's... And if we probably go back and look at all of them, we'll probably have some other ones that are kind of the same overlap. and she'll probably have some that overlap with her dad. And so it, he ain't gonna take it, but he, yeah, he might not take the test, <laughs> but anyway, he take the test. He's, he's trying to, you know. She's very optimistic. Ah, we're going to give it a shot. Old black men do what they want to do. <laughs> but, um, so they can be part hereditary and then they also can be part of the environment of how you grew up, what, you know, what you were nurtured in. That means your environment. And um, 
there's a study, you know, that uh, they have, and it's called the Big Five model. And it says that your personality is composed of five really broad overall personality traits. Mm -hmm. And the acronym for it is OCEAN. OCEAN. Which and, just makes you calm when you say it. Yeah. Ocean. Ocean. So then that stands for O is openness. Openness. You're open and creative to trying new things. That's one of your, you can have a person that, oh, let's go scuba diving and this and that and whatever, or paint. I want to learn how to paint or I want to, whatever it is, you're open and to, you're open to, to try. trying new things. That's what the O stands for. Openness. Conscientious. Conscientiousness. All right, conscientiousness. And that means you have high levels of thoughtfulness and you can control your impulses and you have goal-directed behaviors and you can make a plan and you can stick to that plan. You have the discipline like you were talking about with your military friends. That's conscientiousness, oh, right? Um, and then O-C-E-E, -E, extroversion. It's the opposite of introversion. Those are your social butterflies, mm -hmm. your people that are sociable, they talk, talkative, they're assertive, they're excitability. It's just, you know, that person that comes in the room and is, oh, it's like everything is up, everything is high. They want to talk about, they want to know all the things. They can go to a cocktail party for four hours and be excited about every single new person they talk to and what they learn about them. Um, yeah, that is not me. And I think that's probably hereditary because it's not you either. I um, have moments. I have moments. Yeah. But, and then the A is for agreeableness. These are people that um, have a good sense of kindness, um, affection, helpfulness, working for the greater good, that kind of thing. That's agreeableness. And then neuroticism. Child. It's not always bad, though. But it comes with a lot of sadness, a lot of moodiness, a lot of emotional instability, worrying about many different things, anxiety, all that kind of stuff kind of falls into that. So you basically have those kind of five broad sweeping personality types. Mm -hmm. They mix together. Some are more prevalent than others. But um, if you think about your friends, your family, the people that you know, and you kind of look into that ocean a little bit. You can probably pinpoint who's <coughs> who's like this in your family, who's like that. Your kids, your kids can be so different if you have multiple kids. You can have some that are very um, uh, open. Open. You can have some that are very. I think about the grandkids. You got we oh, got yeah. some that are very, are very uh, agreeable. You have some that are. I don't think we have any neuroticism. Too yeah, much. they're most they're teenagers. Yeah. But anyway, if you if you look at your kids, you can probably see the difference in their personality types, which is really important as a parent, because you can't parent blanket across the board. Like if kids have Some different personality types, to be effective as a parent or as to, to be the to try and be effective. Leave it at effective. You just walk through too much. I know. To, to try and be effective as a parent. Impactful. You can try to, yeah, impactful. Understand those personality types and see what you need to do to help each particular personality, right? Um, I talked about it can be inherited. It's part of nature. It's part of nurturing. It's part of the environment, where they go, who they're around. All of that can affect those personality traits. Um, think about the schools you put your children in. I'm just going to say that being a product of the 60s, and being bus to an all white environment indoctrinated <laughs> and um you know elementary school it was really fun my first grade i was in a pretty much all white school and then the middle years like from second grade to sixth grade i went to a predominantly all black elementary school and then from seventh to twelfth grade i went to predominantly white middle school and high school. So I can't prove it, but I'm going to surmise that being in those environments where um, people ignored you, you know, you had to go to school. It was mandatory by law that, you know, you, we were integrating these schools and all that, but there was a but way. my heart. Yeah. There was a way mandatory by heart. that people ignored you. Um, and a lot of times you were 
you might have been the smartest person in the room, but because you were ignored, it could have affected your personality. And I think a lot of parents are aware of this now, but yeah, check check where you're sending your child to school. If they and that feeling ain't just some the type 60s. of way. Yeah. Some of y'all, some of y'all schools don't look not near no integrated or they're trying to reverse it back. So white be supremacy, mindful. white supremacy is very be mindful. And that ain't just Pay black attention. folks. Yeah. All skin folk ain't care folks. So be mindful. Um, so anyway, white supremacy. Knowing yourself as a person has a profound impact on how you relate to the other people in your family to your children, to your spouse, to your mm -hmm. parents. Your pa your, a lot of your personality traits you might have gotten from your parents and now you are passing them on to your children. Just yeah, okay. look at it. As I always say, try and pay attention to what's going on so you can see if there's some good personality traits you want to keep and then some you might be like, I need to change you that change out those a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You want to better establish healthy boundaries um, because you can establish and communicate those boundaries if you understand <laughs> who you are a little bit. Um, I think, did I miss something? No. Okay. So, yep, your parents, what you got from your parents, what you're giving to your kids, what boundaries you're helping them to see and how you're helping them to establish that. Um, better understanding yourself, understanding your triggers your values, like I was just saying about going to those, you know, all white schools. I think we talked about this before. I have a problem if I feel like you're ignoring me. And I think it has to do not only with schools, but my my mom was not very, um, how shall we say, conversational. She was a doer. She was like, yeah, I just made you four new dresses. Don't be coming in here talking about most black parents in that. We're talking about you know, I, I don't have no time to be sitting up here having no deep conversation with you, which is one of the reasons why I think we do have deep conversations because it's something that I wanted. And sometimes I'll be getting on her nerve too. But um, anyway, yeah. sometimes, yeah. but you'll be having deep conversations too. So I don't even know why. I'm a know deep person. What can I say? I know. So when you want to have conversations, it's okay. But when I want to have conversations, sometimes it goes both ways. Versa. It really does. She's in mode. She don't want to talk to me. But again, we understand that knowing yourself helps you to understand I'm in this place right now. And I might be now, now saying and person doing is something. Gonna listen to you when you tell them they've been that place because mm -hmm. they want to do what they want to do. But you try. But we try. But again, if you know your triggers, you can say, okay, maybe that is true. Maybe that I mean, am overreacting a little this. bit. You yeah. listen, it, the person might the person, <laughs> whatever the person is we're talking about, might listen, but they might not want to change right at that particular moment. That's whole another open show. We'll talk about that later. That's not my problem. You remember? <laughs> I was jumped up with your stuff and some person just <laughs> said other person's stuff. That's the other person. Oh. But it is my problem if you're trying to bother me, though. Yeah. So, anyway. Sorry to bother you. Okay. We, we try to foster a nurturing environment for your children where they can talk about it, whatever. But not all the time. But not all the time. All right. Self-knowledge enhances your ability to empathize and understand others. Um, like I said, your family up and down the line because... If grandma be acting this kind of way all the time, then you see that coming up in your child. It might have skipped you, but you might can see it, you know, further your mom's characteristics in your child and learn how to navigate it's through It's a certain them. level of generational wellness. Yeah. Or generational, I guess that's just passing on cycles, but yeah, not a wellness. And I think, I almost want to call this uh, knowing yourself um, is a true superpower because I think when you are in a diff different emotional place or more emotionally healthy place where you can spot like patterns, like some of the things we're talking about, like the patterns or mm -hmm. the cycles or people's personality traits. Like when you have this kind of knowledge, it actually does become superpower because you have so much more empathy and sympathy for people. Um, yeah. Even family members or people you understand or coworkers or friends or whatever. Like it's almost like you sort of like, remember in the Matrix when Neo had like, really been in the matrix like and you try to integrate it back into the real world like you just see stuff that other people don't be seeing and then i think you also calm down mm -hmm. because you like 
Oh, I know what that is. And again, you realize, oh, this is this person's stuff. It's not my stuff. Like I'm just the person they're taking it out on. Um, but it's not really about me. So it just, it actually frees you to move through life yeah. in a very different way. And things that used to like super set you off, not to say that they might not still set you off uh, for a while, but um, yeah, it just becomes like a sort of inner sword and shield, if you were, it's like strength and protection mm. because you're able to fend off what you need to when you need to get gully with the sword, but also just put the shield up and block that and be like, that's not even for me, homie. That's not even about me, really. Um, I don't so, know why I heard the Game of Thrones. When you Everything is about dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> the sword, the inner sword, fire. that protection and weaponry at the same time, uh, the shield and the sword. Sometimes you need them both. Fire and ice, fire and blood. <laughs> I don't know how I felt about it. How did y'all feel about House of Dragon? Did you like it? <sighs> we can talk about that another time. Anyway, let's recap this because I do gotta go. Um, so, yes, we need to have self-knowledge, and it is important. Um, it's not just a goal or, like, somewhere to arrive to. I think that's the thing. Like, you know, we sort of a check boxy generation. We're like, we can check this out the box. Mm -hmm. But this <laughs> wellness is not a box checking thing because, it, again, it is perpetual. It takes on, it's ongoing, as we said, and it takes on multiple forms as you grow and evolve and change. Um and it means that you will get to a certain level of personal growth and fulfillment, I think, at said place that you are. But once you've sort of achieved it in one facet or in one portion of your life or one thing, then you got to learn it all over again and do it in some other space. So just you keep know, living. You'll figure it. You'll see. You know, just do that. And that's part of a path uh, to generational wellness overall because, again, you might not have been able to see some of the things that. 22 that you see at 32, right? Or 42 right. or 52. So the more you grow, the more you'll see what's up and what might need to change and be reevaluated and what you want to pass on, what you don't want to pass on, what things you just want to cut off and die. Um, sword and shield. <laughs> sword and shield. Uh, self knowledge leads to self alignment. I was going to say assessment, but self knowledge, self assessment leads to self alignment. And that connects your actions, your choices. Um, your core values, which I'm sure we talked about on the previous uh, episode, which is that important. So you can be your authentic self, okay? Which is what we talked about. Have and align and attract the most authentic relationships to the person that you actually are, not the person that you pretend to be, as my pastor says all the time. God can't bless who you pretend to be. Okay? Bless us who you are, right? So it's you good. might be able to fool some people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. There's a lot of hood wisdom today. Um, and once you're doing all that, that's where you cultivate a passion for yourself, of course, and others. And embrace the strength to work on the places where you actually do need improvement. And let's just put this in. There's always going to be a place where you're going to need improvement. You don't tell the truth. Don't just be like, I'll be listening to great generation of women. That I feel like we're not for ego-driven high horse people, okay? This, this work will humble you a lot and then humble you some more and humble you again. You ain't never going to really feel like you arrived, but... You're going to be yeah. better if you down me down. So, um, yes, again, self-discovery is a long, lifelong journey. It evolves. It changes. It grows. Um, Aristotle said, you know, I have a problem with um, Greek philosophers, but um, it's the beginning of wisdom. I feel like he stole that from the Bible. Though, I think so, too. I kept saying that. I was like, I don't think he said this. Here's I was thing. looking for it, too, today. I just, not no disrespect to the Greek and Romans. If you're a Greek and Roman, salute. I know some. But, um, like yes, yeah, if you know your history, somebody. if you know your history, some things were stolen. Anyway, this transformation <laughs> starts with you. Uh, you gotta look in the mirror, as we've been saying. Shout out to the big homie ancestor Michael. Um, or you cannot do it, okay? And then you know you might not necessarily have the foundational work necessary to support said best life that you said that you was gonna live. And some of y'all are gonna live a best life, okay? Your best life it might be based on superficial things, but um, it'll be the best life for you. I'm not just, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I'm just saying if you are create generational wellness, audience member, patron, things of the like, then, you know, these are hopefully the things you're striving for. And if you're not, that's cool. I just don't want you to wake up and be 40 something and be like, I ain't got no real friends. 
because it happens. <laughs> and best life, often. let's just say this, might not be soft life. And we do not have time. And we don't have time. To break, to and we can unpack that another life. day. There's but so let's much just wrong say with the soft life. Best life might not be soft life, but you got to tell yourself the truth about that. Listen. We have to get into that another day. Yeah, another day. I read this quote today from a baseball player named Leon Brown. I saw the quote and it said Leon Brown. And I was like, who is Leon Brown? So I Googled him a little bit and he was a baseball player. And he got drafted, I think, by the Baltimore Orioles, but he didn't make the team necessarily. But then he went on to play. Yeah, professional sports life was tough. He went on to play uh, baseball in the minor leagues for 13 years. Black man. And oh, yeah, and this quote I thought was really good. First, know yourself. Then you will begin to understand why things are as they are and why life is as it is. I'll read that again. Know yourself. Then you will begin to understand why things are as they are and why life is at its, is as it is, right? He has a lot of quotes. I'm going to go back and leave he it out. Yeah, it was amazing. I was like, I who's Leon Brown? Brown? But anyway, that one I thought was- Generic black last name, Brown. Yeah, Brown. But he, he, he must have learned some things playing um, minor, minor league baseball for all those years. And for me, of In course, because as she tell you, I'm a PK. I'm, I'm a church kid. Um, the Bible gives me some kids. a lot. Yeah, I don't know why you be trying to say it's just I didn't me say that you. I'm not, but you are just anyway. extra more churchy than me. I told you I'm my, older. My, you sancti- be my this- sanctification be on back order sometimes. You're you gonna be this churchy when you get older. Just don't maybe. But anyway, Psalm 39. <laughs> it gives me the assurance that I know who I am. Because it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Shout out to Leah Smith. Talking to God. Right Your works are wonderful. So if God made me, I must be wonderful because he don't make no junk. As the little children like to say, God made me. He don't make junk. Um, that used to be a thing back in oh, the okay. 80s. You remember that? Oh, you don't? No. I All was right. born in 1987. <laughs> the year of our Lord. God made me. He don't make no junk. So I try to keep Send that in my mind. Vacation Bible school. Mm-hmm. Much, right? And then in 2 Corinthians, or as our ex-president would say, 2 Corinthians um, 13. I'm so tired of hearing about that man. And this is from the message translation. If, you know you know what that means. There, the Bible has different it's versions. It's the one that's easy to read. It's the one that's you know, easy the to understand. James be having the these and thous. Mm-hmm. The Amplify be using a lot of extra words, but we like it it's mm-hmm. like in depth. The message is like the very straight up remix version. Remix. Because it says, test yourselves to make sure that you are silent in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourself regular checkups. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. And so that's what we're talking about here with knowing yourself. Take regular tests. Take a look at yourself. See, is this working? Is it not? Why is it not working? What can I do? What is God trying to tell me about this situation, this person, these people? Test it out. And make an adjustment if you need to make an adjustment. All right. Big facts. Yeah. So I think that just about does it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this time with us. And we're going to continue to talk about no throughout the month of September. So we've done know your worth. This is know yourself. Know your worth. Know yourself. Was that Aubrey? Drake Graham? Mm. I think it was. Anyways, we'll be here. We're going to keep on knowing for the rest of the month. We'll keep on knowing. But you ain't gonna know if you are. You gonna, won't know. We'll be knowing. But you week, won't know. You're gonna start to make yourself look bad, at least in the world of Career Generation Wellness. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, follow us on IG, like us on Facebook, fan base. We are at Career Generation Wellness on all the platforms. So, um, you know, shoot us something on there. Leave something in the comments. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you are in our listening audience, we love y'all. Please rate, review. Um, do all the things you do in the audio universe. Um, and yeah, we'll just create generational wealth. Yeah, sure. <laughs> do what you do that. Do that. Um, with some of these tidbits and nuggets we did this week. And we'll see you next week. We have some more things to share. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye. Love y'all.